Kidman, Julie. You've assembled quite the resume, I see. They taught you to read at the police academy? I'm impressed. Your attitude won't be necessary today. What is this place? Why am I here? You've been arrested, Miss Kidman. And you're currently being detained. I'm sure even you could decipher that. That's not what I asked. This isn't a regular interrogation room. They don't give you cushy chairs when you're about to be sent to lockup. No current address. On your own since 14, a runaway it seems. Quite impressive you've made it this long without coming to your senses. If your street smarts are that keen, I'd imagine you'd have turned yourself around by now. It's more about survival. You think I'm pissed I got caught? At least I get free food in jail. It's all good to me. What if I told you that today could be different for you? You're a smart kid, you've got nothing to lose, no one to miss you. A person with those qualities could be open to very specific opportunities. What are you saying? You offering me a get out of jail free card or something? Not quite that, but something close. I'm listening. Miss Kidman, please tell me about your family. Next subject. No. We've prolonged this talk for a while now. It's important for our understanding of you. They never gave a shit. Too caught up in that church of theirs. More like a cult. It was like a punishment. Nothing I ever did was good enough for them. They abused you? No. It was more like neglect. That's why when I just left, they didn't care. They never came looking, they just gave up. And you never went back to them? I did. A couple of years later, they were gone. Everyone was gone. It was like the whole town got up and moved. I should have felt something, but I didn't. And how do you feel about it now? The same. They can rot for all I care. It was strange, though. There's a statue in the center of town, an angel with its head in its hands. I used to just stare at it when I was young, thinking it was sad. But now, I felt like even that statue knew how pitiful life was there. What a terrible place. I'm afraid that the fragile mental states of the subjects are limiting our studies. Mobius wants us to move past beacon patients and onto more stable people. They want to get STEM closer to its intended use. Would they see the world in the same way? Would a sane mind weather the psychically draining experience? I had that dream again. I entered the STEM myself. After months of secret subterfuge and indoctrination, they brought me into their fold. This place is elaborate, to say the least. Despite the modernistic visage, the research they have been doing here seems to date back to over a century ago. This place has history, and from what I can grasp, this facility is only one branch of many. Institutions, powerful families, their reach seems grand, and therefore the possibilities for me seem equally as rich. Clearly, my own unique methods at Beacon have piqued their interest, and I am most grateful for the opportunity. Most of what the researchers have been working on, however, seems archaic by today's standards. They told me budget is of no concern. Results are the only thing that matter. Juggling duties here and at the hospital seems manageable, but Reuben, comparatively insignificant, but even at his young age, his studies are remarkable. Perhaps one day he will even assist me with my work here. Patients emerging from the stem are becoming more erratic. The pathologies seem to be amplified by the experience now. Even worse, patients now seem to experience each other's psychological trauma. 
It's as if the user's deepest fears linger within the encephalon of the system, even after the session is over. The most concerning thing are their most recent statements. Every single patient claims to see a hooded figure slowly approaching them. Could it be him? His consciousness existing as a ghost in the system? My curiosity has never been piqued like this. I want to know. I want to see what they see. But it's too risky. For now. Something else is even more harrowing. Our subjects are dying. They come out from a stem abruptly passing with looks of horror in their eyes. The ones that do survive are catatonic, babbling, incoherent messes that we can't properly interview. We've done nothing to the process to cause this change. It must be the ever-growing collective consciousness of the stem system. These patients seem unable to take the strain of exposure. We need more sane subjects, perhaps to cleanse the system. At its current state, the system is unsustainable. Something Mobius will not approve of. This time, only I am to blame for this. Our new prototype and beacon is almost ready. When it is, I will start its conversion to the wireless system. Even if the original STEM experiments go awry, I will show my worth to Mobius with its next generation. Today was something truly surprising. He was one of the last groups of test subjects. Just another patient I expected to babble and maybe even die. Patient 105, Leslie Withers. Reuben had singled him out as a useless subject, but he must have known. He knew I would read his notes. What else was Reuben lying to me about? But this Leslie, he emerged cognate, calm, and able to report fully what he had experienced inside. His unique pathology allowed him to successfully navigate his STEM experience with little repercussion. They know nothing of his existence, but no doubt he is the key. If we all share the consciousness, then with him, I too should be able to experience the STEM, potentially even suppress the more unsavory aspects of it. With him, I can be the master of the very technology I helped create. Mobius will see my worth and let me rise even higher in their ranks. They've refocused the efforts of the other programs to support our research. STEM priority has seemingly overridden other departments' individual research. Chemical and botanical studies are focused now on temporary, priming subjects for their inevitable connection. Now that the prototype is up and running, experiments continue. Upon their return from STEM integration, patients are interviewed extensively. While their particular pathologies inform their experiences, there are commonalities. They all experience the same settings, the same occurrences. The world they inhabit becomes larger with every new visitor. This suggests that shards of each user's consciousness are left behind inside the stem, creating a community. It's as if internally a new world is being built. Reuben has no idea what he's done. It's not surprising that he doesn't care either. He was never motivated by fear of Mobius. The STEM prototype works, but only when connected to Reuben. I've checked the details and he customized the whole system to only operate with his own brainwave pattern. I left him alone with the device for far too long. Trusted him too much, and despite all my knowledge in the field, it's past the point of fixing. I can't just flip a switch. And that's not the worst of it. They know as well. I'm not going to take the blame for this. I will drag him here and make him fix it. I can't imagine what they will do to him if he doesn't.